Congressman Antonio Florendo. Florendo. Congressman Florendo. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman and fellow members of the Commission, I rise to manifest my support for President Duterte's choice for Justice Secretary. With Diana Aguirre's luck, almost half a century of experience in the practice of law. That, however, doesn't make him old in years, but only wise in law. Before he was conscripted for this low-paying job, a fraction of his acceptance fees when he was a private attorney, the nominee practiced his profession with the energy and the exuberance of a recent bar pastor. While others of his stature would have taken it easy by spending days either swinging a golf club or sipping endless cups of coffee, the nominee, if not stood in his desk while writing briefs, hops from one courtroom to another. As an in-demand litigator, he had his fair share of high-profile cases and clients to name a few. Hubert Webb, General Napenas of SAF, Senator King Lasso, Montulvo, and one city mayor named Digong Duterte. when an esteemed jurist, now a justice of the Supreme Court, needed a counsel in an administrative case, he chose from one galaxy of lawyers available, one Mr. Vitaliano Aguirre. But these are just the visible portions of his checkered career. The main bulk remains the services he had rendered to ordinary folks from farmers in his beloved Bondoc Peninsula to an overseas, work, overseas foreign workers swindled out of her last peso by recruiters to laborers deprived of their wages. And whether his client is a president or a pauper, a widely read journalist or an unlettered payon, he gives them the same rate counsel that they deserve. He is a good lawyer because he knows the law and not because he knows the judge. So in examining his qualifications, Mr. Chairman, I looked not on his engagements that saw print or the ones that attracted controversy, like his famous Hear No Evil post, but on the cases that he had handled with neither fanfare or, nor fancy. Because a lawyer's body of work which attests to his fidelity to his oath can be found not in newspaper clippings or TV tapes, but in the largely unheralded work lawyers do to keep the wheels of justice moving. And I am convinced that bulk of his work as Justice Secretary are those that don't merit news or get social media traction, but those which are far more important than the programs and pronouncements of his that get to be publicized. Because dispensing justice does not require flashy moves or flamboyant actions in front of clicking cameras, but mostly humdrum routine work in a lonely desk when all the lights in the building have been turned off except yours. These are recommending parole or pardon for old and sickly personnel, modernizing the immigration system so that tourists get the red carpet while terrorists get the boot, assigning public authorities to where they are needed more and most, advocating alternative dispute resolutions, lightening the load of government, corporate counsel, and monitoring the velocity of cases handled by prosecutors. I think he will teach us, uh, teach every, teach every um, paper that will land on his desk 
with the same attention to details that he crops his bonsai plants and that he will go to the bottom of each, of each case <coughs> the way we descend to the deep sea as a diving aficionado. I believe, Mr. Chairman, that the nominee has the strength and the stamina, the intelligence and the industry, the dedication and the discipline to do the above and all other tasks required of him as Justice Secretary. I therefore second the confirmation of Mr. Vitaliano Aguirre II as Secretary of Justice. Thank you. Next to say